Alex Pangman is actually here in the studio with us today. What a pleasure. Darling. So oh. lovely to have you, darling. I'm, I'm trying to do my mid Mid Atlantic thing. Yeah. Such a curious accent. It really is, isn't it? Yes, it really is. But where does it come from, and why was it then? And it almost sounds like a, a British person on some drug. I know, I know. Well, let's all ask Cary Grant. He did it particularly well. He did it particularly well. Speaking of Cary Grant, I had a good conversation with uh, Diane Cannon this week. No way, really? Just thought I'd throw that out. Apparently, he got her hooked on the drugs. Yep. Name drop. <clears throat> Let me just get to pick that up. I don't care. I know. Nobody cares. <laughs> she left me a fascinating voicemail a long time ago. Oh, yeah? Yep. She said something. She was not happy with me and told me that she would spank me. What? Just leaving that right there. Yep. She did. It was, it was, and never mind, I have to explain it too much. She wasn't happy with me. Um, anyway, Alex Pangman is here in the studio. Do you know nominee Alex Pangman? Can I just tell you that we just posted your entire freaking bio because we tried to cut a bunch of stuff out of it. It was too stinking interesting. Oh. Have I said stinking too many times? Anyway, what a fascinating bio. You think? No, seriously. The double lung pr- uh, transplant? Really? Mm. Yes. Twice. You had two doubles? Yes. That's like me after the show. <laughs> just, just kidding. The first one uh, didn't last. So let's get right into that for a second. Okay. Is there anything to look at you that would let me know that you've had two double lung transplants? I don't think It's not so. a visible thing, right? No, I mean, I wear a medical alert bracelet. Okay. You bring your own microphone because of cooties and stuff? <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, what about uh, the way you sing? First of all, how are your lungs working these days? Well, I'm touching wood when I say it, but uh, yeah. they're working as ex- as they should. Okay, they're and working... how long have you had this pair for? Since 2013. They have a, like a use-by date, or is it once they take, well, they're good? Or um, There's always the risk. There's always the risk that you will have rejection, which is what happened with my first transplant. How long did they last? About four years. Oh, so many questions. First of all, <laughs> everybody from a from a Hollywood point of view wants to know. Oh, do you know the person who gave them to you? You know, or who don't right. uh, they didn't give them? Well, but you know what I mean. Well, it's in Ontario, privacy is a really big it's thing, huge. so we protect it. Yeah. Um, if you do find out who your donor is, it might be accidental. Yeah. I know there's lots of people online that try and find them, but yeah. Ontario very big on protecting privacy. So. Yes. You um you can exchange letters with them through the government, but they it's like it's like the war. They take a big black pen and they black out anything, yeah. I, and an, any identifier is removed from the letter. Right. So I mean, I know that my most recent donor was um, was a, a mother and a grandmother and a, and a lovely lady, and and uh, I, I mean that's really all you need to know. And I mean, I knew she was kind. Like she willed forward her, sure. her organs, right? Sure. By the way, just as a quick aside, sometimes uh, God people. Get for whatever reason, and let me just tell you, it doesn't make any sense at all. So if you are part of a a group of faithy people that think, "Oh, I'm going to really need my parts after I die," I would switch groups <laughs> because the organ donor thing. If anybody should be on that list, on, like donating their body parts, are people that believe that they're they're going to do something else after life, and they know their body is just going to rot in the ground. It's really, and this is from a guy who grew up in the funeral business. Hmm. I know exactly what happens uh, to bodies after they die, and boy, we could use those parts. We really could, and I know I've got some friends that have that T-shirt that say, "Don't take your organs to heaven. We need them on so earth," good. and it is so true. Yeah. I have, I have obviously through my time in the transplant world, met so many people that have needed transplants that haven't got them soon enough. I just, you know, we recycle newspaper. Just, you know, yeah. eight lives can be saved from one donor. Yeah, that's amazing. I like you. And it's just because of the sob story, I think. I don't really know you. <laughs> oh, I know you but have. It's, but it, no, no, I think that's because you cannot have a big lung, tra- a, a huge operation like this and not have some appreciation for life. Right. I Yeah, well, yes, I guess. I. It just seems like everything now seems like gravy. And I know the, the supply of gravy could just be cut off at any time. Gravy train. The, well... <laughs> But the train could run out of gravy, right? Sure. So um, you just, it gives you a renewed impetus to live your life for today and to try and be happy. What's wrong with you? I'm terrible at math, is my no, piano player. Oh, I mean the <laughs> lung thing. Why did you, what's wrong with oh, you? Oh, I was born with cystic fibrosis. So that's okay. a genetic, you get, I got the red hair, 
that's recessive and so is the CF gene. So I got the red hair and the cystic fibrosis and it's a lung disease and it just attacks your lungs until they're like, they're all diseased and shriveled up. <sighs> I want you to do a song, obviously. That's why you're here. I want you to do a few songs. But I really I have so many questions again. I'm go, and I want to go to wh- how does your story, your 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 cystic fibrosis thing, the, lung, the double lung, double double lung transplant <laughs> yeah. sponsored by Tim Hortons. Uh, <laughs> um, you could probably get a little corporate sponsorship there. You know. Yeah. Um, how does that impact relationship stuff with you? Because for someone to sign off on you in a relationship yeah. and love and a future and building a future yeah. again they've got to really understand where things are at yeah um my husband began courting me when i was in a hospital bed now see here kid now see here kid he showed up with you know a stack of music and like candies and i was i was blown away that of somebody would do that but he's you know he has yeah, he's a very positive view on life and yeah. I think he understood where it was at because he entered when I was you know dressed in a blue gown right a hospital gown hey, those, but, those gowns uh, are hot but, man <laughs> you think so yeah. easy access just gonna say <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> but um he he was a special one but there yeah. were ones before who said I can't no I so can't. you've you've experienced that yeah. oh, so, absolutely. okay so two things there one honestly good for that guy to, to actually own it right but it still sucks yeah yeah, it does. <laughs> Man. Anyways, I mean, we're here now. Would you mind doing a number for us, Alex Pangman? Sure. We'll, uh... And let's introduce your uh, your kind accompaniment. <laughs> yes, uh, on the keyboard this afternoon, the fabulous Mr. Peter Hill. Yes, Peter Hill. <laughs> Peter's been with me through it all. <laughs> Including the uh, the late minute, the last minute call to come and do this. That's well, great. Well, thank you, Peter. I appreciate you being here today. You seem like a lovely person. That's because he's laughing at your jokes. I know. I was <laughs> noticing that. Peter likes me. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He just he, It's a pity laugh is what it is. Um, um, yes. What are we singing? We're going to play a song from uh, the record that you uh, brought the segment in with. We, yes. uh, we, uh, we have great songwriters in Canada, but not so many of them came from the 1920s and 30s. But I did dig one out. This is by Carmen Lombardo. Any um, relation to Vince? Vince Lombardi. Lombardo? Oh, that's oh, Lombardi. That's right. oh, yeah, sorry. No, but he was a, he was the brother of Guy Lombardo, Royal Canadian. Can I just tell you, that's actually what I meant was Guy. Really? But, but I went right to Vince. It, on, honestly, I know it sounds like a backup, okay. but I, well, okay. so he's related to Vince. Yes, brothers. And there was also Liebert, and they made up. A... I'm sorry, Liebert? Yes. Yeah, that one yeah. wasn't successful. No one knew about that one. <laughs> Anyways, uh, that band, the, the Royal Canadians, the Lombardos, they did Sweethearts on Parade, and okay. it became a favorite of Louis Armstrong. And so he recorded this. I was inspired by this, and when I made my last record in New Orleans, um, we did it too. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Alex Pangman. In here? One, two, a one, two, three. Two by two, they go marching through all the sweethearts on the rain. I can't help crying as they pass me by. All the sweethearts on the rain. I'd love to join their fun, but they bar me. Cause it takes more than one to join their arms. Show. I'm a little excited, kids. I don't know if you picked up on this, but first of all, what a great uh, a kind of music. 
to have during our love month. Uh, because there's the mushy and the ballad and the whatever, and you know, I'm sure you'll do a little something, something there like that. But, but that um, I don't even know the right words. How, how do we describe what you just did there? What what, what genre labels do we put on that? Well, I mean, you could call it kind of traditional swing. Okay. Music from the 1920s and 30s. Yeah. When and I, well, boys were boys and men were men. Well, yes. Well, we not could always. Use a man like Herbert Hoover again. Anybody getting this? <laughs> no, it's too old for you. All in the family. Oh, yeah. Can you? Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was my bad There it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> um, here, I ask a lot of musicians this, especially uh, keyboardists or, or uh, guitar players. You know, what would happen if you couldn't play, if your hands got chopped off or I don't know, whatever. But with you, this is a real deal. What happens if you can't sing? And you've done this twice and come back. Yeah. I mean, I listened to a lot of music when I wasn't able to play music. Right. Um, but I always <clears throat> had this little, you know, ray of light to think of. Like, I thought, well, maybe one day I will sing again. But I don't know what I would do if somebody just ripped my throat out. I don't know what I'd do. Wow. I've just been watching The Walking Dead. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that visual. I don't know. I guess you channel your creativity somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Pangman here in the studio with us. And uh, Alex, the thing that I realized about you as soon as I, I kind of crept on you online there a little bit is that um, uh, you're kind of the full package. You have great stage presence. You've got um, really interesting, uh, you're, you break down that fourth wall quite nicely because I think you're a very authentic, you come off as authentic. The ability to pretend that you're authentic is tremendous. <laughs> And, uh, and then you're just stinking talented. And then you surround yourself with very talented people. That's like, the key. Like, this is a great combo platter. I, I don't know. I, I read a quote from Duke Ellington once that said, he makes himself look good by surrounding himself with talented Talent. people. Yeah. So. Yeah. Why do you think Why I have Tim here? Hey. First, First compliment, compliment ever. ever. Right, right there. there. Oh, I thought, oh, I thought that, that was reverse. reverse. You, you look good because I'm not. That was easy. Thank well, you, brother. I love you. Okay, shut up. Turkey Nick. Turkey Nick. 40 years years we've known each other. Okay, go. Uh, Wow. Anyway, so I always have good musicians with me because, you know, they make me look good. Right, Peter? I'm glad you're doing this. This is my one of my all-time favorite genres. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah, and I'm so glad you're here. Can we do another number? Sure, we can play another song. What song are we doing? We are going to play a song, another song from the newest album, um, called It's the Talk of the Town. Yes. Now, when I made these selections... I, I didn't think they were supposed to be happy love songs. So is it okay if I play like an anti-Valentine's song? You are in the exact right room for that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, this is one of those tunes. Beautiful. And what's it called again? It's the talk of the town. Here she is, kids. Enjoy it. Alex Pangman. <laughs> Stop and stare. It's so hard to bear. Everybody knows you left me. It's the talk of the town. Oh, every time we meet, my heart skips a beat. We don't stop to speak, though it's been a week. to friends and relations announcing our wedding day friends and our relations gave congratulations how can you face them what will you say let's make up sweetheart don't keep us apart don't let foolish pride keep you from
wake up, sweetheart. Don't keep us apart. Don't let foolish pride keep you from my side. How can love like ours be ended? You left me, and it's the talk of the town. Beautiful.